people are, are so afraid of bees getting stung. Your native bees, if you leave them alone, they're very non-aggressive, you really would have to torment them in order to get stung. Honeybees, you know, if you start tormenting them, they're going to come after you. Um, now don't confuse the honeybees, the mason bees, and so forth with wasps and hornets. They're a totally different species. Totally different. Now, some of them are pollinators, believe it or not. Now, you also have pollinators that are flies that look like honeybees. Take time sometimes just to pull up a chair where, when you have summer flowers that are in bloom. Pull up a chair, just look. See what comes around. You'd be surprised. You know, the different types of pollinators that there are. There are many, many different types of pollinators. Yeah, most of us think of honeybees, so because there's many, many different types of pollinators. So if you live in a wooded area or have woods, look like the bottom picture. That's a dead tree. I've had several trees cut down, but I left maybe a good ten feet on some of these trees standing, and you, you will see holes in them and bee activity on them, because that's where, you know, in nature, you know, that's where they, they're looking for. Um, now there, there are also the ground bees, the bubble bees, digger bees, that need uh, open dirt. If you notice in the one picture, this is, a, this is actually a bee going into a hole into the, you know, might be left over from a chipmunk, or whatever, or they may, you know, be going in there. So, food sources, water, like I said, is important. Puddling, you know what puddling is? Puddling is where you leave a dirty a spot of dirt and keep it moist. A little bit of water. Your butterflies will love that because they get a lot of nutrients from that. And the bees that, you know, need to, like your mason bees, they need, you know, some moisture to make the seal for their homes. 